Hello and welcome to the chain rule part one. The goal of this video will be to use the chain rule to differentiate a variety of functions. The point of the chain rule is to allow us to differentiate composite functions. This function is a composite function. You could think of the inner function as 2x plus 3 and the outer function as a function that raises something to the seventh power. Remember in algebra, if we let f of x equal x to the seventh and g of x equal to 2x plus 3, if we were asked to find the composite of f of g, by definition this is true, therefore we'd start with the inner function or g of x, g of x is equal to 2x plus 3, and this would be our input into f, and the result would be the function above, the quantity 2x plus 3 raised to the seventh power. So we can use something called the chain rule to find the derivative of this, and it will shorten our work dramatically. Here's what the chain rule says. If y equals f of u is a differentiable function of u, and u is equal to g of x is a differentiable function of x, then y equals f of g of x is a differentiable function of x, and dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. Now that's quite a mouthful. The important part here to remember is that our u is going to be our inner function. We are going to rewrite y in terms of u, differentiate that, and multiply it by the derivative of u with respect to x. Now there's a couple ways to write the chain rule. This notation down here means the exact same thing as it does above. It's just written in a different way. g of x is our inner function, and f is our outer function. Essentially, we're taking the derivative of the outer function, evaluated at the inner function, times the derivative of the inner function in both cases. So let's go ahead and see if we can apply this to the function we were considering earlier, f of x is equal to the quantity 2x plus 3 raised to the seventh power. So we'll do this both ways. We'll use this notation, then we'll go down here and use this notation. Of course, our answers uh, will be the same. The key to using this notation, which I prefer, is letting u equal your inner function. So we can see that 2x plus 3 would be our u, and if we let u equal 2x plus 3, f of u would equal u to the seventh power. Now we're ready to apply the chain rule. So the derivative of the function with respect to x, or f prime of x, is equal to the derivative of f with respect to u. Well, here's our f. So the derivative of f with respect to u would be 7u to the sixth times the derivative of u with respect to x. Well, here's our u. The derivative of this with respect to x would be 2. There's our derivative, but now we just have to replace u with 2x plus 3. So the derivative of f is going to equal, and we can multiply the 7 times the 2 to get 14. u to the 6 will be 2x plus 3 raised to the 6th power. Again, this notation down here means exactly the same thing. If we want to find the derivative of this composite function, we take the derivative of f, which is our outer function, and evaluate it at g of x. Now to me, this is a little bit confusing until you do quite a few of them, but essentially what it's saying is the derivative of the outer function, or the function that raises it to the seventh power, of course, would be seven times some stuff to the six. Well, that stuff is our g of x, or the inner function, 2x plus 3. And then the derivative of g of x, again, the derivative of the inner function here, would again be 2. So, of course, we get the same answer. Now, I like the first method because it does kind of break it down into smaller steps. Uh, this one kind of skips from the original function all the way to the derivative, which is fine if you can follow it. I think it's easier to follow if you let u equal your inner function, at least until you've done quite a few of these. Now this leads us to something called the general power rule. We've already discussed the power rule, but the general power rule basically includes the chain rule in the power rule. If u is a differentiable function of x and n is a rational number, then, again, this u could be any function in terms of x, raised to the nth power, 
and it's going to equal the exponent times u to the n minus 1 times this u prime. Well, this u prime is going to be our du dx mentioned in the chain rule. Or instead of using u, we could leave it in terms of the function g of x. Again, these two mean the same thing. One's in terms of u, one's in terms of g of x. Let's try a few and see if this makes sense. First thing we have to do is rewrite this with a rational exponent. So we know we can rewrite the square root as this quantity raised to the one-half power. Again, my first step is going to be to identify the u. Okay, so our u is equal to 2x cubed minus 9, which makes our y equal to u to the power of one-half. dy dx will be equal to dy du times du dx. Remember, another way to write dy dx would be to just write y prime is equal to the derivative of y with respects to u. This would be one-half u to the one-half minus one, or negative one-half, times du dx. The derivative of u with respects to x would be, what, 6x squared. Now we're just left to clean this up. Our y prime is equal to 1 half times 6, that would be 3. Then we have an x squared. Now this is a negative exponent, so I'm going to move this down to the denominator. So that would be a positive 1 half exponent in the denominator. And our u is equal to 2x cubed minus 9. Now this is to the positive 1 half power, or I could put it back as the square root. So notice after you find the derivative, there is still some substitution left and then simplifying. Let's try another. When you first look at number two, you might think you're going to have to apply the quotient rule. But remember, I can take this quantity and move it. And if I move it up to the numerator, this positive three will turn to a negative three. So I can rewrite this function. Let's identify our inner function. Here's our inner function u. Our u is equal to 2x to the fourth minus 1. Therefore, y would be equal to 5u to the power of negative 3. Applying our chain rule, dy dx, or y prime, is equal to dy du. Well, here's y. The derivative of this with respect to u would be negative 15u to the negative fourth times Again, here it is if you forgot, du dx. Here's u. The derivative of u with respect to x would be 8x to the third. So we need to clean this up and replace y with 2x to the fourth minus 1. Negative 15 times 8x cubed would be negative 120x to the third. Since this is raised to the negative fourth power, I'll move it down and replace u with 2x to the fourth minus 1. And here we have our derivative using the chain rule. Okay, this ends part one of the chain rule. Chain rule part two will cover using the product and quotient rule mixed in with the chain rule. Thank you for watching, and I hope that was helpful.